Hi, hobby friends. Let's talk about Space Wolves Dreadnoughts. What's not to love about the Emperor's lupine, Viking-inspired executioners? If you like your Space Marines violent and wild, there is no better option. Only one problem for me as a painter. What the hell colour are these guys supposed to be? From deep greenish grey through steelish neutral grey all the way to a pastel teal shade, these boys get depicted in all sorts of colours. Even the heavy metal team doesn't seem completely convinced on any one option. I'm sure there are good lore reasons for the disparate appearances, and if you're a lore junkie, please let me know down below. But for our purposes today, we're going to paint these five dreads, well, many more than just 50 shades of grey anyway. If you've been watching for a while, it'll probably come as little surprise that to get a cool grey, I'm starting with this nice, chocolatey, warm brown. Lively, contrasting shadows are a painterly feature I'm forever chasing in my hobby journey, and these sorts of early, slightly unintuitive steps definitely send us in the right direction. With the lads looking like menacing chocolate boxes, we start setting the real base shade for our cool grey, using another favourite of mine, Petrol from Molotow. I don't want to completely lose that brown though, so the angle I'm aiming for here is mid to top, leaving the undersides totally brown. I fancy blending those two layers a bit as well, and upping the warmth and the brown, so into the airbrush goes some burnt sienna, and that gets applied to all the underbits. Having an airbrush makes doing quick adjustment glazes like this a real breeze. Right, time to get some grey on there, starting with this blue-grey. This is a fairly delicate process, using a little more consideration than just blasting all over, since we want to maintain at least a flavour of the steps that we've completed up to now. With that darker grey down, I used this lighter grey as our final, for now, highlight colour really focusing in on those upward surfaces, and on the cylindrical parts, the surfaces facing us as we view the mini from the front. I've never really talked about volumetric shading on the channel, because there are lots of good guides out there already, but let me know if you fancy hearing my take. Alright, bye bye airbrush, time to bust out some black contrast style paints, and get some black bits blocked in. With all that lighting information already set up for us, we want to try and stick to transparent paints for these blocking steps. It's a massive time saver if at least some of our shading is already done for us. After black, I mixed up a rough and ready version of Vince Ventruella's gold recipe. Just a pool of Vallejo metal colour gold, and a dash of Green Stuff World's gold metal pigment. This is the best gold colour you could ask for, with great flow and super coverage, so if you're struggling to find a gold you like, I'd certainly recommend this. Just be careful, I haven't had much luck keeping it bottle stable, hence the ad hoc mixing here. For our interred warriors' undercarriages, I keep it nice and simple. These are a commission piece, and if I'm not careful, I'll fall into the trap of aiming for display quality on every detail, which would unfortunately leave me earning pennies per hour. If you need efficiency, but want good-looking results, you need to learn to concentrate your efforts where it counts, and metally bits on a dreads underside is likely not where you should pour your time. So just a super simple but effective metallic dry brush here. Of course, no spacefaring half-dead Battle Mac Norseman would be caught on the fields of war without a fetching wolf pelt shrug and or loincloth, so let's tackle those. Scale 75's instant colour range is kind of the weird cousin of the contrast style paints, generally having more of a heavy body acrylic wash feel. But they certainly have their uses, and the browns from the range are probably my favourites, so using a mixture of those and leaning into the long drying times, I wet blend some furry base coats on all the dead wolves. Space Wolves have these great icy looking power weapons with some lovely details on them, so using some pure white and a stubby little dry brush, I next went in and quickly picked out the details on those. This is just the first layer, a sort of localised grisaille, but we still want to make sure we pay attention to our lighting, focusing more of the white in selected spots. Also an idea to go in and add some nicks and scratches with a regular brush too. 
adding this sort of detail at multiple stages will give your work depth and dimension, particularly useful when you're looking for a semi-translucent effect like I am here. Over that base work in white, I wet blended two GW contrast paints, the dark blue one and this teal. As you can imagine, the teal is focused on the lighter parts and the blue goes over the darker areas. We're really into our catabasis into detail purgatory now, where a project can start to feel like a game of spot the gem you missed. But to keep things snappy, let's just focus on one thing this time, these bones. I love painting skulls, and not just because I'm a recovered wannabe goth. There is something deeply satisfying about the shapes and details on skulls, and the sketchy, open painting style that suits them so much. These guys get a deep brown base, building up through khaki to a more typical bone colour in the highlights, and then just a touch of pure white here and there to really make them pop. If you're looking to practice sketchy layering, you could do a lot worse than practicing on skulls. They're the perfect blend of forgiving but detailed. Alright, these guys are looking good, but for my taste they're a little on the wrong side of grey. I feel like the wolves should be icy without being too bright. More winter storm than glacier, but more frozen lake than concrete wall. Does that make any sense? Anyway, the solution, as always, is oils. This time a snazzy little mix of lamp black and thalo turquoise. We're filtering here, so I'm leaving everything with its matte finish, relying on the micro textures and absorbent quality of the current paint to suck up some of those pigments and take on a transparent bluish hue. Everything gets a good coating, and don't worry, I swapped to a more appropriate medium square brush off camera, and by the time number five was done, number one, or specifically his weapon options, were ready for a good sponging. Remember, we're always looking for opportunities to modulate and intensify our lighting, so feel free to keep more of the oil paint in the shadows and really clean up the highlights. When that first pass is done, we can also go in with a Mineral Spirits Dampened Q-Tip and clean up the highlights even more. But be warned, depending on your paints and timing, this can stain your mini pretty irreversibly. I was after an all-over filter, almost like a lighting effect here, so no worries for me, but worth noting anyway. With that out of the way, we can get back to details, and also re-establishing a little of the warmer tones in areas like the skin and the skull highlights. While you watch the ever so satisfying edge highlighting process here, let me take a second to say thank you to the newest friend to sublime into the hallowed halls of superb supporters over on Patreon, the apparently pink-hatted Zaxton Hale. Thanks buddy, you keep the mead cup brimming and the paints flowing. If you like what I do here, you can join Zaxton Hale and other fabulous folk for a few bob a month, or just pop into the free discord for good times and painting chat. I'm in there basically every day, ready to talk all things hobby and painting, so come say hello. And of course, hit the thumbs up and leave a comment to help other would-be wolfen warriors find this video. Alright, let's take a look at these guys. Moody, cold, brutal, just the way I like my space wolves. Note the way the brown undercoat has merged with successive layers to give a subtle bounce lighting effect, shading into purplish tones. That oil filter has also snuck into the corners of the golden bone too, giving us really complex, colourful shadows and light interactions as well. If you want to play Spot the Gems and Lenses GRG Mist, you can head over to my website linked below to see all the photos nice and still, and a gallery of lots of other stuff too. That's your lot for this week. Let me know what you think in the down below, and I'll see you next time.